Hey everybody, it's Keith of Bob C&C here today with my best friend Robert. And I'm here with my best friend Keith. And we're going to talk... Who doesn't have a surname. No, I don't. I don't have a nickname. Keith is probably... You have a nickname. It, it's not one... Okay. Bob, wow, that hurt really bad. Uh, we're going to talk today about something that uh, you don't want to talk about. Or you didn't want to talk about. You told me that when I wanted to talk about it, we weren't going to talk about it. And then you said, we're going to talk about this today. And I thought, well, but you said we're not. So we are. So what? And for our Canadian viewers. For Canadian viewers. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, you're going to say it right. Okay. Well, yeah, I think there's like two. Yeah. A, right? Aluminium. Yeah. We get a lot of questions about, can you, can cut, you cut aluminium? I can't say it that way. I know it. It's aluminum. It's aluminum. Me. Yeah. Yeah. You're, so, you're so yeah. talented. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. Anyway, so the bottom line is, is yeah, we have customers that ask, and what do we right. always say? We, we don't, we don't we recommend, don't recommend it. it. Yeah, right. And we still don't recommend it. We don't. But look at what it does. This was done on the Evolution Three. This yeah. is one of the tests. Actually, it was the Evolution Four, but the Evolution yeah. Three would give you the similar results. Right. So uh, I guess you the just, bottom line you is, just have to let everybody know. Yeah. Well, you could say aluminum <laughs> Canadian. Uh, or British or, or, or whatever the way the rest yes. of the world says it besides let's talk about this. okay all right so why don't we recommend cutting aluminum when we obviously can because well first of all you can cut aluminum but I want everybody to be clear here I mean we're going to show you some samples and we're going to talk about this but you're never going to get the results that you would get on a mill cutting on aluminum no or cutting, want, cutting on a CNC I'll get that right well, do you want to explain the difference between a CNC and a mill? Well, uh, typically now today's mills uh, are a lot faster RPM, but a mill is just a lot more rigid and it's designed to cut uh, metals, right? So uh, you're going to have coolant, you're going to have lots of stuff, but the, the biggest thing that you're going to have is mass, you're going to have weight. Um, our Evolution 4 is, uh, oh, maybe 30 or 50 pounds, somewhere in there. I can't remember off the top of my head. My bridge port is 3,000 pounds. My Evolution 4 has a better cutting area. Uh, so the, so the, a, a, a mill is just designed to cut steel and soft metals. A CNC router uh, can cut it, but because it doesn't have the rigidity, you're going to get what they call chatter. Right. And you're going you're gonna to bounce that bit as you're cutting it because it, can't, it cannot hold it tight enough or rigid enough to do that. Right, and uh, this would be probably true to mills or CNC routers that are like below five thousand dollars. Right, this is just it's just one of those things when you when you design something, you build a router, you know, you want a great big cutting area. Well, to get that size of a cutting area and be able to cut it like it would on a mill, whoo, uh, yeah, you would have a substantial amount of weight, it would be measured in tons, right? Okay. Would, so, so it's just a different machine. So if you can deal with some chatter, we can minimize that chatter, but we have to uh, pay attention to uh, our speeds and feeds and uh, what we're, how we're cutting it. So uh, let's start off with uh, this little block here that, uh, that John Havens was working on because uh, he wanted to cut aluminum. I said, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, let's see what we can do. So he was cutting at 100 inches a minute was his uh, base speed, and then he did it by percentages and then he changed the depth of cut just so he could yeah, he could track okay. it right so here he's got he's cutting ten thousandths deep at 70 percent so 70 inches a minute here he's cutting two thousand steep but he's doing the full 100 inches a minute and he was just looking at the different uh, quality of cuts right as he was doing it he also tried it with compressed air uh, to remove the chips and without compressed air so that the chips may be stayed in in the hole right because it would be cool if you could do it without the compressed air. Uh, but the bottom line is that if you want to cut aluminum on a CNC router, uh, including the Evolution 3 and the Evolution 4 or the KL7 series, then it is possible. But here are some of the things that you're going to need to do. You're going to need to buy a bit that's made for cutting aluminum. It's got a high helix angle, right? It's designed for cutting aluminum. You want as few flutes as possible. Uh, even there's uh, some that are called zero flute. I don't know how that works, but they obviously have something that cuts, right? But, uh, but that way you don't have to cut as fast, right? Because if you have more flutes, 
your feed rate needs to be that many times faster according to the speeds and feeds calculator. So buy a bit that's correct. Matter of fact, buy a few bits because you're going to break one or two of them, right? Okay. The next thing you're going to want to do is get some compressed air in that cut. The worst thing that you can do, or maybe not the worst thing, but a bad thing that you can do when cutting aluminum is after you cut the chip, if it's in the hole and the cutter comes by and tries to fold it in half, has to cut it again, that's really bad for bits. Okay, so you're going to need something to compress air. Uh, a lot of people try uh, like WD-40 to put it in the hole to keep the bit cool. The air will keep the cool bit cool enough and it will remove the, the chips. chips yeah. And that's what we're talking about. The other thing is, is you're going to want to cut as shallow as you can without causing the bit to rub. And that's going to take some... What do you mean rub? So if... If the bit is set at like a, a thousandths or so, what's going to end up happening is it's just going to pop up on top of the aluminum and go along for the ride. And of course, it's spinning at that 30,000 RPMs, or actually we would want you to slow that down, right? But it's spinning at the high RPMs. It's just going to heat up the bit. It's going to dull it, and, and it's, going to, it's not going to work, right? If you go too deep, you're going to break the bit. If you, your feed rate is too slow, you're going to weld aluminum to the bit and then you're going to break the bit. So you can see this like, well, can anything possibly go right? Yes, there yeah. is a sweet spot, but it's a small sweet spot. So if you got air using the right bit, got the right feed rate dialed in, not too deep, but not too shallow, right? Then you'll be uh, successful at, at cutting aluminum. Uh, this is like about a half inch deep that he's cutting here. He just kind of made our, our logo. So, so you can understand why we would say that uh, we don't recommend it. There's a learning curve in itself. I mean, once you learn to cut, the, cut with the CNC and you're doing well, uh, yeah, there's a, a learning curve for uh, aluminum uh, to cut. Now, it sounds almost counterintuitive, counter but we still don't recommend it because no. uh, most customers are not willing to go through what you have to go through to learn well, this. Well, you'll tear up your machine if you don't yes. do it right or if, if you're not conscious of everything that's going on. So we're trying to say this is all you would have to do uh, to get in the game. Uh, if you're cutting really thin aluminum, right, the problem's going to be that it's going to want to bounce up and down. Uh, you could use carpet tape to hold it to like a piece of MDF or even better yet, some contact cement and uh, hold it down. Uh, if you cannot hold your piece rigid, you won't be successful. That would be the, the, the last thing that I wanted to mention. But you're right. Uh, we don't recommend it because it's difficult and it's frustrating. And, right. uh, and again, even if you do it well, you're not going to get the results that you would get on a, uh, on a mill. Now, how did you... Now I, we're not going to be able to show this. Right. But you've got different depths of cut. You've got different speed rates. As you're looking at those, mm -hmm. how are you determining that that's the best you can get from the machine. So John, I wish we, uh, we probably have them somewhere back there, but he cut out a whole bunch of eighth inch pieces and so we could look at the sides, but I'm basically looking at the edge of the cut and I see right here at a, a hundred inches a minute and two thousandths with the bit that we were using, oh, it cuts really, it really pretty clean. It has a nice straight line. Uh, when he's uh, uh, like 70% at ten thousandths, still pretty clean. But you can start to see a little bit of chatter where that bit Red is bouncing back, back and forth, and forth yeah. as it's cutting. And that could have been because of, uh, you know, he didn't have this glued down well enough. Or it could have been just the uh, harmonics in the system. Notice on this piece, if you turn it over, he basically glued this one down so he could clamp it down to get that started. Because he started to realize how important it was to keep the piece of aluminum from moving. I mean, not like sliding across the table but just moving a little bit, just vibrating, vibrating back yep. and forth. It just, it causes all kinds of grief. So, uh, so you can, again, it's, it's difficult. It's not, it's not fun to learn. I mean, I probably said a few bad things when I was learning how to use You still aluminum. say a few bad things. Yeah, well, when I cut aluminum, I'm sure I do, because <laughs> it's, dark. but, but, but that, that is the, that is the experience that I have. And that's not true just for our CNC routers. It's true for uh, across the board. Guys, we absolutely love your questions. If you have any questions at all about CNC, we just ask you to give us a holler at the help desk at bobcnc.com. Until next time, thanks a lot.